Hello, public opinion aficionados, and welcome to Rasmussen Reports, where we document the destruction of shareholder value and institutional trust through the terminal parasite that is postmodern neo-Marxist cultism, or, you know, for lack of a better word, wokeness. Now, if you've been following our channel, you know we've put out some pretty eye-opening polling about Disney, the movie industry in general, Target, Bud Light, and even the media. But now we're going to cover something near and dear to my heart personally. And make sure you hang on to the end if you want to hear my take about it. But we're going after the vaunted American Ivy League education, the absolute pinnacle of educational success in this country. At least it should be. Well, maybe because of political homogeneity, censorship on campus, or maybe new postmodern classes, or maybe it's just all these Hamas protests. I got to tell you, the value of an Ivy League education looks like it's in the dumpster. There's a very clear signal running through all these questions here, every one of them, and I'm not being hyperbolic. When you see these numbers, it's really hard to imagine that these institutions in the near future won't collapse under their own weight. So let's get to it. And while you're at it, if you wouldn't mind liking the video and subscribing to our channel on YouTube and Rumble, it's free and it helps us get seen by more people and it helps support us so that we can go and poll on more institutions being destroyed by wokeness. But here is the very first question. And this is an American adults poll, not likely voters, 1,232. In recent years, has the value of an Ivy League diploma increased or decreased? Only 10% of Americans say increased, but 41% say decreased, a four to one margin. And if you've been keeping track, that is worse than Bud Light and Target. 31% say it's stayed about the same and 18% are not sure. Here are the numbers by party. And what I'm trying to show you here is that there really isn't much of a difference ideologically. That's the thing about wokeism. You know, Democrats are more inclined to believe the underlying components of the ideology, but nonetheless, 14% of Republicans say the values increase. That's actually more than Democrats, although more Republicans, 53%, say the value has decreased than Democrats, 32%. But if you combined increased and stayed about the same, it's, you know, it's kind of flat. It's 34% for Republicans, not, not much higher for Democrats, 49%. But only 7% of independents say in recent years, the value of an Ivy League diploma has increased. And those tend to be younger people. But if you're looking for an age signal, here it is. And 19% of 18 to 39-year-olds do say in recent years the value has increased. But more of them, 36%, say decreased. Now, Americans over 40 are agreed that the value has only gone down. Only 4% of them say it's increased, but 47% for middle-aged Americans and 39% for Americans over 65 say the value has decreased. But the reason the 18 to 39-year-old signal is most important is not only are those people most recently out of the educational system, they're also soon to be parents who will be sending their kids to college. And by basically a two-to-one margin, they say the value of an Ivy League education has decreased, not increased. Here's the next question. Is it worth paying extra money to get a diploma from an Ivy League university, or would students be better off if they save money by going to a state university instead? Only 15% of Americans say an Ivy League education is worth the increased cost when compared to a state university, 67%, you know, more than four to one say students would be better if they just save their money. And again, to the party signal and, you know, Democrats are a little bit more likely to say worth it, but it's 19% of Democrats and 12% of Republicans. 77% of Republicans say that students should just save money and 64% of Democrats, 60% of independents Agree. Now, it's important to note, too, that this isn't an anti-education signal. This is an anti-Ivy League signal. And again, showing the age signal, it's 18 to 39-year-olds who are most likely to say it's worth it. 
But by a three to one margin, they also say it would be better for students to save money, 61% to 20%. But are people who go to Ivy League schools like Harvard and Yale better workers than people who went to other colleges? Only 10% of Americans say yes, but 75% say no. And this is just an absolute excoriation of the people who go to these institutions because a lot of Americans know people who have Ivy League educations. They're parents to them. They work with them. People have weighed and measured the value of the people who go to get those degrees. <laughs> Seven to one, they say no versus yes. These people are not better workers. Final question, and this is a little bit of a pushy question, but we put it out there specifically to see what kind of internal signals it would drive. How serious of a problem is it that graduates of elite universities are out of touch with the values of ordinary Americans? 45% of Americans say very serious. Another 29% say somewhat serious. So that's a combined total of 74% or three out of four Americans saying it's an at least somewhat serious problem that elite universities are out of touch with ordinary Americans. Only 5% say not at all serious. And again, this is why we did the question. Is it a party signal? Clearly, Democrats just don't know what we're talking about, right? They like the values of people on these elite university campuses. Wrong. Couldn't be more wrong. 54% of Republicans say very serious, but also 44% of Democrats and a combined total of 76% of Democrats say it's at least somewhat serious of a problem. It's actually independents dragging the number down. And only 6% of Democrats say it's not at all a serious problem. So, I mean, pretty horrific, right? I wasn't being hyperbolic. If you've got a take or you looked at the crosstabs and see something I missed, make sure you post it in the comments at YouTube or Rumble and I'll take a look. You know, to be honest, to me, these numbers really aren't that surprising. I actually got a Wharton MBA back in 2010 in the 2000s when the general wisdom was that it was essentially a golden ticket. And I'll have to tell you, I haven't found that to be the case. And to be honest, everybody talks about how great the network is. I would say my military officer network is way more valuable than my MBA network. Now, I don't want to get into a trade-off on the massive opportunity cost versus other, you know, I'll just give you my personal experiences. And I knew I was in for change because I basically showed up a month after the 2008 Lehman collapse. You know, I should have already known that things were changing. But here's in general what I just noticed looking around myself when I went to Warden. There was first, and remember this is 2008, there was an infatuation with pride, Barack Obama, and of course, Apple branded technology products and, you know, Facebook. There was also what seemed to me a general lack of intellectual curiosity, you know, for a program founded on the Socratic method, I often found myself being the only one arguing counterpoints. What was really troubling, though, to me was the just ubiquitous fascination of the marriage between the government and corporations. I was really lonely in 2008, being the only one in my massive finance class, asking questions about the implications of moral hazard in bailing out the banking institutions after the great financial crisis. You know, I mean, if I keep looking back, there's actually probably a really massive list of things. I mean, at least one of the people I'm pretty sure in my learning group was a Chinese Communist Party spy, but probably the one that had the biggest impact on you and me is my feeling that just most of these students were completely morally elastic. And these are people that would go on to climb the corporate ladder and are in leadership positions in major corporates today. Do you have any personal MBA stories or do you have any organizations you'd like us to aim our crosshairs at? If so, again, please post them in the YouTube comments. Subscribe if you haven't and make sure you follow us on Twitter at Rasmussen underscore poll. I know people like Getter and True Social, but you got to get out there and out of those echo chambers. It's really going to pay off, I think, in this election season. And while you're at it, make sure you follow me too at Mark underscore R underscore Mitchell. And thanks for watching.